Hey, I'm pumped y'all are here tonight. We're getting ready to do week two of our series called Thirst. If you guys weren't here last week, we started our brand new series. And what we looked at is we talked about what we're going to be doing this month. And we talked about how in thirst, we're looking at that we need to have a thirst for God. We talked about how this summer we want to go deeper and know God, who He is. Well, before we do all that, we have to understand, we have to rely on Him, we have to chase after Him, we have to uh, look at all these aspects of who God is so we can fully understand Him and have that relationship. And just like you guys need to have water to survive, we want you to understand that you want to have that relationship. You want to thirst for that relationship with God. And so that's what we did. Now, last week we talked about that. We talked about what it means to rely on God. And what we looked at is we looked at Moses and we looked at the, uh, uh, the Israelites that he had taken and, and freed from slavery. Uh, and when we did that, we talked about how um, they, they needed water and they wanted water and they were thirsting for it. And we talked about how they were willing to go back to slavery just to have water, that they should have stayed there. They'd be, they'd be happier if they had stayed slaves. And what we talked about was two words that were extremely powerful. And we talked about how those words that are if only and how the words if only can change everything. And when we say that, what it means is we don't accept the reality. And we don't accept the reality of what God has put in front of us. And, and ultimately, we don't, we don't rely on God for the purpose He has in our lives. So we looked at that last week. Now this week, we're going to change it up uh, just a little bit. And before we go in, I have a question for you guys. And I want you to kind of think, what happens when we chase after the wrong thing? What happens when we go after uh, things in our mind that we know that aren't right or, or they're wrong? And when I was thinking about this question, it reminded me of a story that my dad always told. I always listened to my dad teach and teaching to him preach. And he always had this story uh, about this dog. And he always used to tell me, like, you never knew you could learn a story from a talking dog. And so that's where he came from this. So what he was telling me is that there's this dog on this puppy farm. And on this puppy farm, they had uh, young puppies, they had older ones, and they had this uh, rambunctious young puppy that did nothing more than constantly was just chasing his tail. He would chase it in circles and circles and circles, and the older dog would sit and watch and kind of laugh, like, what are you doing? Why are you chasing your tail? Why are you doing this? And the dog would tell him, like, there's happiness in my tail. I know it. If I could just catch my tail, I can find happiness. It's always wagging. It's always moving. So I know there's something going on. If I could just chase it down and catch it, I could find happiness. And the older dog kind of laughed at him and looked and said, silly, when you find that, you're, all you're going to do is catch it. You're not going to do anything. It's not going to find anything. He said, what you need to do is not continuously chase after the happiness, but let it follow along behind you. And so that story of that is showing us that we think there's something there, and we chase after it. We think that is what we want. We think that it'll find that happiness, that we have this thirst in our lives. Like the dog, it thirsted for happiness. It wanted to find it. So it constantly would run in circles to find what it would want. And sometimes we're willing to go to the wrong place to get it. Just like that dog, it was willing to run in circles and run itself dizzy just to catch its tail, even though knowing and hearing from somebody is not going to quench your thirst. It's not going to quench your thirst in the end. And in the end, all it's going to do is leave you wanting more. Now, you guys have your notes with you, and you're going to be using them tonight. You should have also gotten a post-it note. Save on to it. Don't crinkle it up. Don't throw it away. You're going to be using that tonight, too. But what I want you guys to do for me, real quick, I want you to write down some examples of things you want. Write down whether it's two or three things. I want you to write it down right now. Take your paper. Write down. Those of you watching at home, do the same thing. Just write it down. Put it on there. Write something that you want. It could be material. It could be a skill. It could be a, a lifestyle, whatever you want. I want you guys to write down two or three things that you want. Now, once you've written that down, I want you to go ahead and write down uh, and check off on there which ones you know that you might have to go to the wrong place to get it. You might, do I really need it or am I going to have to sacrifice something? Am I going to have to do something different? Write a check next to it. If you put something down and you're like, yeah, it's kind of iffy, you know, if you have something on there, put that. I want you to mark those down so you can see what it is. See those examples. Now, the reason I want you guys to look at those examples is because we all have things that we try and thirst after. We all have things that we want, and we all have these things that we think we know 
that's going to quench my thirst. As long as I get it, if I chase after it, and in the end, once I get it, then I'm good. It feeds my hunger. It, it quenches my thirst. I've, I've got what I've wanted. But sometimes you go to the wrong place to get it. And when you guys do, don't you wish sometimes that there was just this light in your head that would go off and tell you like, hey, this is a bad idea. You shouldn't do this. It's just this little light. It's also called your conscious, conscience, conscience, conscience. You feel it inside. You know inside. That's that little light that blinks that says if it's green, like, yeah, you're good. It's okay. Keep doing this. This is all right. But you have that red light that you're like, no, stop. This is stupid. This isn't going to turn out right. Don't go down this road. You need to turn back. Stop chasing after this. It isn't going to fulfill what you want. So it warns you of the dangers. And it warns you that you're possibly, you're heading down a wrong path. You're going down the wrong way. But even with that, if you had something that was right in front of your face and it blinked and it showed you that, hey, this is right, this is wrong, would you still do it? Would you still go forward? Even though you see that red light, like, hey, don't do this, don't move forward, don't go, don't chase after this, this isn't right, would you still do it? Would it change your direction? Well, for me, I I would continue doing it, even with that red face in front of me. And it reminded me of a story when the one time I messed up with my wife, probably the worst I ever have. I never, ever, ever can have it forgotten. She reminds me every time it's my birthday. And what it was is it was before we had gotten married, and she knows I love running. She knows that uh, I love to have music while I run. And I had these set of headphones that I wanted so badly. These big set of headphones, they were expensive. They were like waterproof. I was like, I want these. I want to be able to have these when I run. And so she knew that in her mind. Well, the day of my birthday, I got a bunch of birthday money. I had that. We hadn't had dinner yet. We hadn't hadn't had her gift, hadn't done anything. And so I decided that morning, like, I want these headphones. And so I found them on Amazon. I'm like, these are a great price. I'm going to go ahead and buy these. I'm like, Again, nothing's telling me, like, hey, don't do it. Don't do it. I'm thinking, like, green light. Yeah, let's go. I'm going to do this. I'm going to buy these. And so I went ahead and bought the headphones. I was excited. They were going to be delivered in a few days. And so that night, we go out to dinner, and I get my gifts from everybody. And I get Emily's gifts, and she's like, I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited about this gift. I can't wait. I've been waiting to give it to you. She tried to give it to me a few days before. For those of you that don't know my wife, she has no idea how to wait to the day that you're supposed to give a gift. Like Christmas, she wants to give it to you like December 1st. Like, do you want your gift now? Do you want to? I'll give it to you. If you want it, you can have it. So she's been like dying to give me this gift. So she gets it. I open it. And guess what it is? The headphones. And I'm thinking like, oh, yeah, I'm so excited. This is awesome. And I tried to play it off. I'm like, you got me the headphones. Oh, my gosh. Inside, I'm like, oh, my goodness. I bought these this morning. And I'm thinking, like, if I can just return these, then I'll be good. Nobody will know. And so I'm going through, and I'm trying to play my best game that I can. Show her I'm excited. I'm pumped. I can't wait to use them. You know, she's like, why don't you open them and look? I'm like, ah, you know, I'll wait until I run. I don't, you know, I'm going to wait. I don't, I don't want to do it just yet. So, you know, dinner goes on, and she's sitting there, and she's like, babe, are you okay? Like, do you like your gift? Or is it okay with you? And I'm thinking, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I love it. I'm excited. She goes, you don't seem excited. She's like, are you, are you sure you can tell me? And at that point, I'm like, well, I can't really lie about it. And so I'm like, um, I may or may not have bought those this morning on Amazon. And I've never seen her face get at red so fast. And she was like, I've been so excited. She's like, you bought a gift for yourself on your birthday. <laughs> Who buys a gift for their self on their birthday? And I was like, I didn't really think it through this morning. I was a little excited. And lo and behold, I've never been that. Like, I don't think we even talked in the car right home. I was like, thanks for the birthday dinner, babe. She's like, "Mm mm-hmm. She didn't say where I'm like, I'm really excited about your present. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, we didn't talk the whole way home. And I'm thinking as soon as I got home, I'm like, I text my dad. I'm like, Dad, I messed up. Like, I'm in so much trouble. But that was a bad move, all right? That was one of those times where... I wish I had had something in me that said, don't do this. Don't chase after this. I know you really want it, but don't do it. You're going to the wrong place to get it. And I should have waited. And it would have, I would have saved myself. I wouldn't have been in trouble with my wife. I wouldn't have had to dig myself out of the doghouse. All that stuff. So, guys, that's, a, uh, that's also for you guys to take to yourself. Write that down. Don't, don't buy yourself something on your birthday, especially if you're dating somebody. So, 
Um, but tonight, if you have your Bibles, if you have your Bible app, your phones on, you go ahead and turn to John chapter 4, because that's where we're going to be spending most of our night tonight. And John chapter 4 is interesting. It's a story that's written by the Apostle Paul. And what we're going to be looking at tonight is a story that the Apostle Paul written about where it's talking about a Samaritan woman and Jesus. You may have heard the story before where it talks about the, the Samaritan woman and Jesus at the well, which is what we'll be looking at tonight. But before we begin, just a little backstory. Jesus and this Samaritan woman are at this well, this well called Jacob's Well. And he had been with his disciples all day, and he wanted a drink of water. And it's this well that's stuck inside of a public place where, they, where they're able to get water from and, and pull nutrients from. And so uh, he goes there to drink and get something. As he sees, there's a woman that's there, a Samaritan woman. But again, before we move forward, even more to understand what it was, was a Samaritan woman is when back in the day of Jesus, Samaritan women or Samaritans in general and Jews, they didn't mix. They didn't talk. They didn't like each other. Uh, they didn't they didn't discuss at all. They had different beliefs. So they didn't discuss at all. And on top of that, so Jesus is kind of struck out. He's talking to someone that he's not supposed to be. On top of that, uh, in his time, Jews also were not supposed to talk to women uh, in public. So Jesus is like, oh, for two right now. So he's talking to this woman. On top of that, she is a Samaritan woman. And so it strikes up this conversation. And when Jesus comes to this well, he decides to ask her for a drink of water, which is interesting because we all know Jesus doesn't need to ask for a drink of water. Jesus can turn water into wine. I bet you Jesus knew there'd be Dasani and all that kind of stuff. He could just, if he wanted it, he could say, give me a Dasani bottle. People would be freaking out like, hey, what's that plastic clear thing you're drinking from? Like, Jesus doesn't need somebody to hand him water. Jesus could stand there and say, hey, I need water now, and it would rain down from heaven. So it's interesting that he's asking this woman, hey, I need you to get some water, okay? He's not being lazy, but you know there's something going on. So when Jesus asks a question, You should know in your mind, all right, two things are going on, okay? Jesus just doesn't speak words to speak words. He just doesn't say things. When he's saying something, there's some meaning behind it. There's some weight behind it. So you know that Jesus is asking this question to try and start a conversation. Well, when he's trying to start this conversation as well, the fact that he even asked her a question in your mind, you're like, I know, all right, Jesus, you're going somewhere with this. Why are you you asking me for some water? What's the point behind this right now? Like, you know, Jesus has got a plan. It's not just, hey, I need some water. Jesus has got something that he's going on. He's got a point that he's going to prove. So in in John chapter four, we're going to start in verse nine. We're going to see where she replies to Jesus when he asks for this water. And here's what she says. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? So we're going to look and see how Jesus responds to that. She's told him, like, we're not supposed to be talking. We're not supposed to be hanging out. There's no reason for you to ask me for a drink. The well's here. Do it yourself. So he responds in verse 10 with, Jesus replied, if only... If only you knew the gift God has for you, who you are speaking to, you would ask me, I would give you living water. So they're going to end up conversating a little bit more, talking more and more. And Jesus is going to respond to her again. And Jesus's response is going to be our series scripture. That series that we, that, that, that scripture that we brought up last week, where it's verses 13 and 14. This is how he responds. Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. So that's not where the story ends. It doesn't just stop with Jesus asking for water. It actually gets even better and has even more of a point. Like I said, Jesus asking for a drink of water, there's probably a point to be made. So as he does, I want you guys to go ahead and skip down to verse 15. And here's where he picks back up. She says, please, sir, give me this water. Then I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here to get water. Go and get your husband, Jesus told her. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband. You have five husbands. And you aren't even married to the man that you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. All right. If this was in a crowd and people were watching, it'd be like, ooh. Jesus just laid it down. Like he hit her. He's like, oh no, you're right. You're not married. You have five husbands. And the fact that you don't even have five husbands, but you have a six that you're living with that you're not even married to. 
So Jesus just kind of threw it out there. Like, he pretty much put her under the rug. Like, she has no response to this. Like, he has, he has made sure that he understood, like, I know what's up, all right? Again, I'm just asking for water, but we're going to go a little bit deeper. So Jesus laid it down. So this entire conversation about water, this is his way to get to her. This is his way how he's letting her know what you're doing is not quenching your thirst. You're going after it the wrong way. What you're trying to do, how you're trying to fill things, it's not going to work. It's not going to do it. It's going to continue leaving you more and more thirsty, which it does. Five husbands, guys. Five husbands. First one didn't work. Second one. Third. Fourth. And then the fifth one didn't even work because now she's hanging out with some guy she's not even married to. So he's showing her, hey, this isn't working. What you're chasing after, what you're trying to fill isn't. See, God knew she was broken. God knew she was hurt. God knew that she was lonely. God knew that she had felt like she was in the darkest place that she had been. And she was trying to satisfy her life with all these men, all these men that she was spending time with. And when God is continuing to speak with her, Jesus is speaking with her. He's telling her basically the way that you're living now, the things that you're doing, it's not quenching your thirst. It's not going to work for you. You can continue to do it, but you're just going to continue to chase. Just like the dog, she's going around in circles trying to chase her tail because she thinks she's going to find happiness through all of these guys that she's trying to be with. So he's trying to show her, look, God is the only one who can fulfill your life. God is the only one who can quench your thirst. So when you hear that story, I hope it kind of makes you guys think, what is it that you're searching for? What is it that you guys are thirsting for in your lives right now? Things that you want to chase, and maybe you know it's not going to quench. It's the wrong way about it. But what is it that you're searching for? Those uh, post-it notes that you guys got, I want you to go ahead and pull those out. You guys should have gotten one. Yes, everybody has one. Pull out your post-it note. Take it and use that. What I want you guys to do, we're going to take a quick activity. I want you to take just one thing. If you want more, you can write down more. But I want you to write down at least one thing that you're searching for. I want you to write down one thing that you're thirsting, that you want more than anything, but you know you don't need it. Something that you want to give up. I want you guys to take about 60 seconds. I really want you to think about it. What's something you're searching for? I want you to write that down. And the reason I want you to write that down is when Derek comes up and does our giving, he's going to talk to you guys about passing around that bucket. I want you to take that post-it note. You don't have to put your name on it. You don't have to write anything so I know who it is. But I want you to take that post-it note, and I want you to put it inside the bucket. Because this week when I'm doing devotions or I'm going over things, I'm going to pull those out. And I don't know who they go to. I don't know who they fit to, but God does. And I'm going to spend this week praying over it that God will help you find something else that you won't chase down what you feel is going to satisfy your life. Now, while you guys are doing that, I want to read you a quote. As I was looking and studying through, I found a quote that fit with this whole story that talked about searching for things that we're trying to quench our thirst. And here's what that quote says. The soul by nature is like such a desert or like a traveling, wandering through such a desert. It is thirsty for happiness and seeking it everywhere, and it finds it not. It looks in all directions. It tries all objects, but in vain. Nothing meets its desires. Though a sinner seeks for joy and wealth and pleasure, yet he is not satisfied. He still thirsts for more and seeks still for happiness in some new enjoyment. To such a weary and unsatisfied sinner... The grace of Christ is as cold waters to a thirsty soul. That quote, what that is essentially telling us is that only God can be the one to satisfy us. Only God can be the one that quenches our thirst. That Jesus is the living water. That living water is the only thing that's good for us. Chasing after God and not chasing after the things of this world, the things that you think are going to quench your thirst that's what that's telling us. That what needs to be satisfied. Now, real quick, the story's not over. Again, I told you guys, it's going to start with asking for a drink of water. And it's going to end somewhere totally different. So I want you guys to go ahead and jump all the way down to verse 28. And here's where it ends. And I want you to kind of read this with me and kind of, I want you to try to pick out what you think in this verse. 
is so important. And here's what it says. The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone. And the way the story kind of ends up, she tells everybody that she's met the Messiah. He knows these things about her that she hasn't told. And they all need to come and meet her because he's fed her this living water. But this whole verse, the reason that I pulled this out and I wanted to point this out before we finish up tonight, what to pull out. And it's something that you would probably just look over. You wouldn't even think about it if you were just reading in your Bible. But it says the woman left her water jar. That water jar I feel, like the, I feel like John left that on purpose. When he's writing this chapter, he left that in there on purpose. And this jar, it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor for our life. So she's met Jesus. He's told her that she needs to be drinking from the living water, not the water of the well. So she takes this jar that she's filled up and she's left it. The reason that she's left it there when she goes tells everybody she's left her life behind her. She's left behind that, that water that she's going to continue having to come for. There's no need to come to the well over and over again because that water there isn't going to quench her thirst. That water isn't going to, uh, isn't going to help her uh, to, to get through what she's needing, what she's searching for in life. She's accepted that Jesus is that living water. She's accepted that she's done trying to quench her thirst her way. So this jar... What, what is the jar in your life? That post-it note, that what you're writing down, that's what I want to be your jar. What are you guys leaving behind? Are you even willing to leave behind what's holding you back? Are you able to just rely on God and know that he is going to quench your thirst? Are you guys able to, to understand that we need to not chase after the things that are going to continuously make us thirsty again and again and again. Or are you going to chase after God that once you taste that living water, once you have that, you're not going to thirst anymore? Let's go ahead and pray. God, I thank you again for these students that are here tonight. And I pray that when they hear this, when they, when they understand, they hear that story about Jesus and the, the Samaritan and, and they get to the end and understand what it means, God, that I pray that, that you'll put on their heart, that those post-it notes, they'll put something down that they want to get rid of. I pray that they'll truly find something and give it up. That they'll find that jar and know that the water that's in it isn't what they need to be drinking. I pray that they'll understand that that jar, it's time to leave it behind. And God, I pray that those students that are here tonight, God, that if they don't have a relationship with you, if they're searching for what needs to be had to fill their lives, God, God, I pray that they'll, they'll take on to that. They'll understand that they need to to chase after you, God. And if you're here and you know that you don't rely on him, that you constantly chase after those things, maybe you're just like that dog that continues to chase after his tail over and over again, thinking, if only I could get it. If only I could get my tail. If only I could get the end. Then I know I'll be happy. If you're here tonight and you know that you're ready for that relationship with God, you understand that God gave His one and only Son to wipe us of all of our sins. That God is ready for a relationship with you and you are ready for a relationship with God knowing all you have to do is open your heart to Him. Leave your jar behind. Open your heart to God. And ask Him for a relationship with you. If you're ready for that step, just raise your hand for me this week. If you're ready to move forward. God, I thank you again for each of these students tonight. I thank you for those that are making decisions, that are writing things down, that are saying, God, it's yours. I'm done. I'm done chasing it. 
I'm ready for a life with you. I'm ready for a life where I'm not chasing after my own desires. And God, I ask that you take each of these students and you just let them apply this to their lives this week. I pray that you take these things and just allow them to use them as the week goes on, God. God, we thank you for everything that you're doing. We thank you for everything that you have planned in our lives. In your holy name we pray. Amen.